Let's go and read. Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I am bringing you a new tag video. This is the tag video that I was tagged in very recently, so massive thank you to the original creator. Now, I will leave all the details, including the creator as well as the questions, down below in the description box below. So if you would like to do this tag, then you can simply just copy and paste all of that and it'll be easy and you can look at it as a reference. So. This tag consists of several questions. This tag is called Life Events Book Tag. And this was created by the lovely JL Todd on Booktube. But like I say, it will be linked down below in the description. So let's get started with question number one. I'm going to be reading this off of my phone. So question number one is Newborn, a book that was recently released that you want to read or that you have already read. So for this one I went for a book that I haven't yet read and that is Save the Date by Morgan Matson. It's recently come in. I'm very very excited to give this book a read and I am really looking forward to giving it. It's perfect for the summer so I am most likely going to put this on my July TBR. I am, I'm just really really living up for this book right now. Question number two is Loose Tooth, a book series you had to push through to read. To be honest, and I was looking through my Goodreads as well because I couldn't really see from memory, but through Goodreads I couldn't even see a series that I had really really pushed myself through because I don't often push myself through books I don't enjoy. If I don't enjoy or like love it, I don't tend to continue until I'm sort of like feeling ready to. I mean there are some books that I haven't loved and I just don't feel the need to continue just yet but I will eventually because sometimes second books are better than first books. We never know and I always like to give book series a try. So there are some book series that I know that I need to reread and see if I form a different opinion because sometimes I've reread a book and I've enjoyed it more the second time but there's also the same thing but opposite. So it's just one of those things we don't know. So for the moment, I can't exactly say there is a series that I have made myself push through. Question number three is Monster Under the Bed, a book that haunts you. So for this thing, I'm just gonna say a book that I actually found back to be quite scary. And that is Say Her Name by James Dawson. So I'll place the picture over here. So with this book, it's based on, I don't even really want to say it because I get a bit scared, but Bloody Mary, and I read it around the time of like Halloween, and yes, it's it's very, very spooky. It, it was written very, very scary, and I recommend for you to read it around Halloween, but it really scared the bejeebas out of me, especially like reading at night, so I don't recommend reading at night. I don't recommend reading it, especially if you just sort of believe in those sort of things but ever since just I'm looking around now and like reflections and stuff because I'm so scared that I've said it I feel like I'm gonna have to turn around three times now I'm gonna do that after this video I'm not gonna joke but yes that book very very scary question number four is first day of school a book you were or are scared to read because it was or is outside your comfort zone so for this one I'm going to pick a book that I'm actually going to admit that I'm very very intimidated by because of its size and also because it really is out of my comfort zone in all sorts of ways and that is A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Now this book I really do want to read but I'm intimidated by the size of it as well as the fact that it's an adult fantasy and it's a high fantasy and also I'm intimidated as well because I know there's a lot of deaths. I am told that you get used to characters and that you learn to love and then they get killed off sort of thing. So I am very scared. I do really want to. I've owned this book for a few years now, especially this first book. And I really, really just need to actually plonk it on a month after I don't have a lot of review books, whatever that would be, where I can just sit down and actually read it. But it's going to take me probably the rest of the year, if I'm honest, because it just, it's just that daunting. But 
I'm sorry guys, it's just very, very intimidating. Question number five is First Crush, a book that will always have a special place in your heart. So for this book, I am going to go with All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Again, I'll place the picture over here. So this book is one of my favorite books of all time. I reread it for the second time in this very year. I read it before release when it first came out. I was lucky enough to get an e arc of it. Loved it so much that when it was released, I bought myself a physical copy and then I read the physical copy this very year. But I love it so, so much because for me, um, because I have anxiety and depression and that sort of thing, I feel like it was a very good representation of it and I really sort of liked it. I know it's very hit and miss for a lot of people, but for me, because I have those things and because I felt towards the book, that's why I like it and that's why I think it will always have a special place in my heart. The first time I read it, it really brought me to so many tears and it takes a lot to make me cry at a book. So for that, it was really, really good of Jennifer Niven in a way to pull on my heartstrings because she got my attention and she got me to be able to cry at a book. So kudos to Jennifer Niven. But yes, that book will always have a special place in my heart. Question number six is, first love the book that you fell in love with first. So for this, obviously I'm going to have to say Harry Potter books. Those were like pretty much my first ever love. I remember in primary school, we would sit around in a circle and we would each take a biscuit and share it around the circle whilst our teacher would read a chapter of the very first Harry Potter book. And that is near enough when I first fell in love with it. And then my mum eventually bought a copy and I read it for myself and I fell in love with it. So of course, I mean, I've read books before that that I also kind of fell in love with as well and that was the Animal Arc book series. I really really enjoyed those books as well but Harry Potter was the first because I remember it being released in 1997 and then when I left primary school um, I was at that eight, I was 11 and I used to walk to the library and I would get the Animal Arc books out of the library so I loved those books. That's by Lucy Daniels if you don't know and I suppose that was like my second love but you know Harry Potter will always have a special place in my heart as well and it will always be like a first love. Question number seven is graduating from high school a book that you had mixed feelings about finishing. So for this one I am going to say Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I had very high expectations of it, but I was also a little bit sceptical because I have read other books by John Green um, that I didn't like the same as The Fault in Our Stars. And The Fault in Our Stars is very, very special to me, so I suppose I do hold that book very, very high. So I, I don't know, it's, it's really, really tough to sort of say. So. Unfortunately, Turtles All the Way Down did disappoint me in a way. I, I didn't mind it. it, it wasn't like a bad book, but I also didn't love it. And I ended up giving it away to one of my other booktuber friends because I didn't care too much about keeping a physical copy of it. But I'm also glad that I kind of read it as well. And it was interesting to see John Green go into a different sort of area, you know, with, with like that mental illness sort of aspect. Question number eight, moving out, a book you were both excited and scared to read. So for this one, I've decided to go with The Hating Game by Sally Vaughan. And the reason that I am a very sort of like skeptical about it, I read it this year. I was very, very excited to read it because it was really hyped up. However, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. I was actually quite let down by a bit of it because of just, just something that just sort of like happened in the book. And honestly, it could have been um, a, like a favorite read of mine. I, however, did like really, really like it. I think I actually still gave it five stars because I did really enjoy it. But I feel like, because I felt like it was going to go one way, it just felt, I don't know, I feel like I was a little bit disappointed because of it. It was only because of like one thing, if I remember. So because I was very, very excited to read it, I was also scared that I wasn't going to like it. However, luckily when I came through with it, I did like it, um, but not find it absolutely amazing, like how everybody was saying it was. Question number nine is marriage, 
a book you will love forever and ever. So for this one, I decided to go with something different, and that is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. So this is the movie cover edition, because also the movie is very sentimental to me as well, and this edition also has pictures from the movie, which I'll quickly show you with some, and it's some pictures of Amsterdam, which is really awesome because I went there last November, so I think that's why like I will love this book forever and ever as well. Um, so yeah, everybody knows the storyline of this book anyway, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but it's just very very special to me and yeah I just I, I love it so much. Question number 10 is retirement a book that made you feel fulfilled so for this one I'm actually going to go with this book here which I haven't spoken about in a while and this is Unremembered by Jessica Brody I need to reread this actually because I do want to like read the whole trilogy and this book it was one of the first books that I read on booktube, it's one of the first physical review books that I got on booktube. I was very excited that I received it, I remember when it came in the post and I was like oh my god I've got it and I read it and I fell in love with it, I found it amazing and it literally fulfilled every spot of my being, I just, I found it so, so awesome. So this, I believe, is about a girl who survives a plane crash and she doesn't know like who she is and anything about her. I haven't read it in years, so please forgive me about the synopsis. I've read so many books since then. And she literally can't remember and she doesn't understand. She is literally lost. Then one day this boy just comes along and recognises her and it just goes from there really and I really like stories where the main character literally does not remember anything about themselves and things like that because we're like discovering them along with us if that makes sense like we're discovering their story as well and we're just sort of like getting the emotions along with the main character. I know this book has been like hit and miss as well with some people. I absolutely love it and I don't mind that people don't like it because that's just the sort of person I am because I know that there are some people that don't like the Harry Potter books but I literally accept that. But this book was definitely a book that really fulfilled me. Question number 11 is Old Age. A book that you will be rereading or will own for the rest of your life. So for this one I can literally say all the books I have mentioned today which I have loved. So that could be the Harry Potter series. I'm always going to be rereading those books. I, and don't hate me on this, but the Twilight Saga, I, not honestly, that was the first series that got me into reading teenage books. So I will always be thankful for that and, and also vampire books as well. So that series I will be rereading as well, like here and now. I've reread it a few times actually and I feel like I'm just going to be rereading it like later on just to see like how my taste sort of goes. That's why I just like things about reading. And then obviously The Fault in Our Stars by John Green I'm going to be having for the rest of my life and even the Unremembered trilogy I will own as well and All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Basically all of my favourite books that I have found to be absolutely amazing are the books that I will be keeping. I need to go through my books pretty soon and just sort through the ones that I have found to be absolutely amazing that I will not get rid of. A lot of Colleen Hoover books I read and I literally am gobsmacked because I just really, really enjoy them and I can see myself rereading them again and again. So there are, there are loads and loads of books that I could honestly put towards that question. And question number 12 is Next Generation, a book that you'll pass on to your kids or grandkids one day. For this one, obviously, without a doubt, Harry Potter. So when I'm a lot older and I don't care so much about my collection in a sense, like obviously I will keep, keep them but I will let the grandkids read them. I know that Harry Potter is going to be around if I have kids like later on in life and I will definitely be reading the books to them. I will be lending the books to them. They can have their own copies if they want. The Harry Potter bookshelf will always be around in the home for them to look or and to protect. And yeah, 
I hope that they do enjoy it just like I have and I feel like it would just be really really good because my mum read the Harry Potter series and then I've read it and then it would just be really good it, like if I have kids if, if they read it it's kind of like it's gone down in the generations as one of those book series so let's just hope who knows what the future holds that's just one of the unknown things but that is literally the last question so question number 13 is to tag some people so I'm going to leave in the description box below I think I'm going to pick like about five people who I'm going to tag to do this tag so I hope that uh, they will be able to do it but yes that's it but if you guys want to do this video as well then feel free to like I say all the questions and the details will be linked down below in the description for your reference and it's a really really good tag and I've really enjoyed doing this tag and it's different and yeah I feel like people should give it a go so I hope you guys do get around to doing it but that's all for this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, then please feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more of my face and more of these videos. I upload videos. I don't have a specific schedule. I upload videos like all the time. But if there's a specific video request you would like me to do, then let me know down below in the comments because I always like to know your guys' feedback. As you can see, I'm trying to do some more tag videos at the moment. I haven't done a tag video in a while, so I need to get some tags rolling. So that's all really, guys. Hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified every time I do upload a video, just because I have a very sporadic schedule when it comes to uploading videos. But all in all, guys, keep smiling, keep reading, and be happy. My name is Katie and I'll see all of you wonderful awesome people in my next video. Bye!